Hello and welcome back to Giles Honey. Uh, this is going to be the first in hopefully a monthly series on mead making and uh, the first one that we decided to make and uh, we've already made it. I'm going to go through and show everything how how I did it, uh, the process uh, later on. But uh, this here is a spark is going to be a sparkling ginger mead. Uh, it came up pretty good. Uh, I had a few few issues here and there, but then that, that's you know par for the course has not started fermenting yet so usually my meads take about a day uh, before they start bubbling so we'll keep an eye on it and uh, go from there but uh, anyways uh, without any further delay let's go ahead and get into what we did and uh, and how it came out for our ingredients we used four pounds of orange blossom honey I know the directions there say three and a half but we had to add half a pound in order to hit our original gravity reading. We used three quarters of a pound of ginger, finely chopped and skinned. We used a third of a teaspoon of Fermaid K as a yeast nutrient. We used three quarters of a teaspoon of diammonium phosphate as a yeast energizer. The yeast that we used was a Lavlin 71B112 yeast, um, which is good for fruit wines and that sort of thing. And we chose not to use the go farm. And here we are with a pretty picture of all the ingredients. So the first thing we did was start sterilizing everything to include the grain bag that we put the ginger in. And then we went through and sterilized the rest of our equipment uh, to make sure that everything was nice and clean and we wasn't going to make anyone sick. In order to chop up our, our uh, ginger, we used one of these little Cuisinart things, and put it on the chop uh, selection, and then went through all that. We started by adding our uh, orange blossom honey, which we heated up in the jars to make it easier to pour. Then we added the water until the point where we could get to the original gravity reading. Then we added the uh, grain bag with the ginger, the yeast nutrient and energizer, along with our yeast after we let everything simmer down a little bit. As you can see, it's not fermenting yet, but we have faith that it's going to. Okay, so we have it completed now. And it is in the one gallon carboy. And as you can see, if I can get around here, uh, everything's looking pretty good. It hasn't started fermenting yet. And uh, most of my meads generally take about a day uh, before they start bubbling and uh, I've got a little sample of what it's going to taste like obviously it's got a ways to go and there's no alcohol in it but it, it is it is sweet they in uh, in order to get my original gravity uh, I had to go up to about four pounds of honey instead of three and a half so uh, I wanted an original gravity of 1.145 that was the original directions uh, the recipe that I found online and uh, the the only major issue hiccup I had was getting the the uh, the grain bag that I ended up using for the ginger inside the bottle inside the carboy. So um, that's may or may not be interesting getting out once it's all said and done, but we'll see. But in the meantime, it's uh just from shaking it up, it's already got a ginger flavor, and obviously it's got that orange uh, blossom honey. So I think it's going to pair really really nicely. And uh, in about two weeks or so, actually every day, we're going to come back tomorrow and the next day and the next three, three days in a row and we're going to add the nutrients to it, um, the, the yeast energizer and the yeast nutrient and uh, try to keep that, that yeast going and uh, eating up that, that sugar. So uh, we'll, we'll come back and see how it goes. Thanks for watching.